Hello everyone, I want to do a video on this, the US M1 carbine and I've been thinking, so I was going to do a video where I was going to talk about the type of rifle this is but then I figured out there's nothing really quite like it unless you consider it to be a very early example of an assault rifle which according to all the modern stuff it isn't but if you look at it, it kind of is so basically what the M1 carbine was is in the late 30s the Americans wanted to develop a lightweight rifle for use by rear sort of echelon troops, ones that wouldn't necessarily be on the front line but they didn't want them to have to carry around really heavy rifles like the M1 Garand so what they came up with is this and the idea is that you could have um, removable magazines it would be effective up to about 300 meters, 300 yards um, so it has a decent range on it, better than a submachine gun or a pistol of the time more power than obviously a submachine gun or a pistol, which we'll get to in a moment because of its cartridge and you know just to be a lightweight easy to carry gun now it always does amaze me how lightweight this gun is I don't know how obvious that's going to be on the video but it's only a couple of kilos at most um, you know you could hold it in all sorts of different ways it doesn't tire your arm at all um, unlike most other rifles if you weigh something like a Lee Enfield or an M1 Garand most of them are about 10 pounds Browning automatic rifles even heavier, like the Bren guns even heavier as well. Something like this that only weighs a few pounds, you know, a couple of kilos at most, is really lightweight for a World War II gun, especially with all the wood furniture on it. I mean, I'd be really interested to see as a concept if someone got, I wouldn't want obviously somebody to do it to an actual authentic World War II one, but if somebody had an M1 carbine and all the wood was replaced with plastic, modern sort of gun plastic, how lightweight they could make this rifle, I imagine it would be crazy lightweight. It'd be sort of a Ruger 1022 sort of level of weight, I imagine. But anyway, so the idea was that they'd have this and it'd be issued to sort of rear troops. And also it was given to the US Airborne. There's the cartridge it uses. Hopefully you can see that there. You'll notice it's an interesting cartridge. It's like a big pistol round. It's much longer than a normal pistol round. Um, I think the measurement for this is 762 by 31 millimeters and the measurement for like a 9mm is 9x 19mm so it's not quite double the length but it's getting there now if you think of other sort of early assault rifle rounds the German Sturmgewehr is the 7.92 by 33mm round I believe so that's only 2mm more propellant in it obviously their cartridge casing could be a bit wider but there's not much more power in the Sturmgewehr than there was in the M1 carbine same with the Kalashnikov, um, the original one, 762 by 39 millimeters. Again, that's a bit more powerful, but there's not a massive deal to it. So, apart from this having a pistol-type bullet head and not um, sort of a pointed rifle, jacketed round head at the top on the bullet, there's not much difference. So, um, yeah, what made the M1 carbine so good is the lightweight of it and uh, obviously you could easily remove the mags, these are 15 round mags, later 30 round mags were used for it and it became a very popular rifle simply because of how lightweight it was, you know it's a pleasure to carry this if you um, you know, have carried something all day that's heavy with all your equipment it's going to wear you out whereas an M1 carbine is so lightweight it's ridiculous if you had that on the sling it wouldn't bother you at all as you carried it around on your back so um, see that's one of the great things about the M1 carbine now because it was successful later on they made the M2 carbine and the M2 carbine is literally the same as this except for it's got a fire selector that lets you put on fully automatic not just semi-auto like this one and that's where I think it really does become one of the first assault rifles ever because once you've got um, a rifle like this that can shoot then fully automatic and they added the 30 round magazines it's really not all that different from the concept of modern assault rifles especially ones with the 5.56 the sort of 545 five, um, Soviet rounds and 556 NATO, obviously, that you've got sort of not a massive amount of propellant behind a smaller headed cartridge. But you know, obviously, they're more powerful than this. But the idea is similar that you've got a lightweight cartridge that doesn't recoil as hard because the 30 caliber carbine round is very different to the um, 30 cal the M1 Garand uses because that's a lot longer, that's like a full size power bolt action rifle cartridge whereas this is a much more small cut down, closer to pistol sort of cartridge, you can see from how small the mag is there. Um, so when the M2 carbine came out and that had the full auto capabilities that would definitely to me indicate that it was an assault rifle of its day. 
the M2 carbine was really no, not much difference between it and the Sturmgewehr at all, apart from being a lighter rifle. Um, I think the Sturmgewehr had a slightly longer effective range, but 300 yards or meters, whatever it was on this, isn't bad at all, especially when you consider it was never designed to be used as a frontline weapon initially, it just did so well they used it for that. Um, so later on you had the M3 carbine, and the M3 or carbine, and that was one where basically it was the M2 carbine, but they stuck a massive infrared night vision sort of scope thing on it, which was apparently very effective against the Japanese at Okinawa, I think it was, but um, that obviously didn't see much use by the end of World War II because it was developed in 1945. Um, I always think those massive infrared lamps on one of these look really ridiculous, but apparently, um, you know, it worked quite well there in the jungle, and I guess the light weight of the rifle meant the massive weight of the scope still made it manageable, but anyway. So, obviously, later on, they had the M4 carbine, which is still in use, the Colt M4, or M4A1 now, so that's obviously very famous, but the M1, M2, M3 were actually related rifles, whereas the M4 is a separate thing. Various versions of this have had different stocks, but that doesn't seem to be related to the actual model, like M1 or M2 or M3. It seems to just be what was built in the factory. So some are cut off about here, and have a folding metal stock. Some of them as well, um, the bit here, sort of above the um, barrel, where you'd have the, I guess, sort of like upper handguard. On some of them, that's a metal grill, I think, to cut down weight more and let more heat out. And so if you had one with a metal grill and a folding metal stock, you'd cut the weight down in length even more, which is sort of crazy of this thing because of how light and easy to use it is anyway. So, yeah, that's the M1 carbine and by extension the M2 and M3 carbine, which I think was really the first assault rifle of its day. Um, came out around the same time, slightly before the German Sturmgewehr, and it did a similar thing. It was a cut-down rifle cartridge, or a souped-up pistol cartridge, whichever way you look at it that was designed to offer you more power than the submachine gun or pistol but obviously it was lighter and easier to use than a full size rifle so there we go the M1 carbine one of the coolest guns of World War II